This exercise right here will add inches to your vertical. I took my vertical from 24 to 50.5 inches by becoming more powerful. Jumping is all about power. The more force you can produce over a longer distance in as little time as possible, the more power you're gonna generate and the higher you're gonna jump. So because power is one of the most important aspects of jumping higher, the power snatch is going to be one of the best exercises to improve your power output. So the reason why power snatch is such an effective exercise for improving vertical is because power is going to be a function of force times distance over time. And a power snatch is taking a relatively heavy weight across a really big distance in a very short period of time. Now, there are two main downsides to the power snatch. The first one is that if you have a history of shoulder pain, it might get aggravated during this exercise. So make sure you take care of your shoulder health first before trying this. And the second downside that is brought up by a lot of coaches is that the technique is too difficult. At THP, we use a lot of Olympic lifts. And to be frank, technique being too difficult is just a bad excuse to not do the exercise. Like with any complex movement, it's gonna take a ton of reps. You can practice this literally every single day, even if it's just with a broomstick. Put the time in, studying the exercise, doing the exercise. You can get really proficient at it really quickly. It's just about your work ethic. So don't be lazy guys, put the time in. Don't use technique as an excuse to not learn this movement. All right guys, so this is the power snatch. As we said, it's one of the best movements for improving athleticism. I really like it for general mobility constraints, especially in the shoulder. It's just good for teaching good coordination. Isaiah is gonna set himself up so that his laces are gonna be underneath the bar. I like to go where the smooth part of the bar meets the knurling, which is the rough part of the bar. From this position, what he's gonna do is he's gonna bend down and he's gonna grab the bar and pick it up. Go with a wide grip on this. We'll work on the grip in a second here. So Isaiah's gonna pick the bar up here. How he's gonna figure out his grip is that if he goes narrower with his hands, go ahead, go narrower, what's gonna happen is the bar is gonna move down his leg. Now the bar is at about mid thigh. I want the bar to be about at my belt line. He's gonna move his hands out until the bar is at the belt line. Oh, he's training! <laughs> End of the catch, which is where the bar is overhead, and then we'll go back down to the floor. But we have to make sure that he can do an overhead squat. So this is literally the very first thing. So he has his grip here. Then from here, he's just gonna upright row, turn over, and push the bar overhead. That is the bar path. And if he has the right grip, the bar should be about eight to 12 inches above the back of his head. So the back crown of his head. So that's a good position there. So he is in the correct overhead position. To work on getting in this position or to, to understand this position, what you need to do is you need to push up on the bar as aggressively as possible. And one big mistake that I see guys do is that they'll have their elbows pointing backwards. So you always wanna have your elbows pointing the front. It'll almost feel like you're bending the bar. So never have your elbows pointing backwards and your armpits down. You're good, you can- I was getting tired. <laughs> So the bar path of how we wanna do this and actually get the bar overhead, it's gonna be an upright row. You're gonna turn it over and then press up and the bar should basically try to scuff your nose if you do it right. We're just gonna work on the bar path here. If you're not very strong with your upper body, you can get the legs involved a little bit to get this bar overhead. Nice. So try to turn over and as you turn over, lean back and push up. Yep. Notice also how Isaiah is kind of pushing his head through at the at the end. I like to cue that sometimes just to help athletes and really punching up on the bar. If you can't do that, you probably should work on just that turnover and being able to punch up and make sure that your elbows are locked out, you're pushing up on the bar, your wrists don't bother you. If it does, I would recommend just doing this five to 10 reps, maybe every other day. Maybe you could go as high as 20 if you wanted to practice with a broomstick or a women's bar as well as a good uh, starting point. Now, after we know how to get the bar overhead, we know how to support it. We need to learn how to do at least a quarter squat in an overhead squat. So Isaiah's gonna take the bar again overhead. He's probably getting winded here. <laughs> and he's gonna go ahead, pull it up overhead. So now we see that the bar is in line with the back of his head here. And all he's gonna do is in his squat stance, he's just gonna go down to a quarter squat. So in this position, what we should see is that the bar is almost moving backwards just slightly. If he keeps it forward, or if he leans forward without letting the bar come back, what's gonna happen is the bar is gonna be in front of him and he's gonna lose it. So you have to make sure that you can do this. If you watch from the side, the bar should be lined up between his, if you drew an imaginary line from the side, it would be lined up between his hip and his knee right through the middle of the foot. Do you wanna rest? Yeah. All right. <laughs> This guy. <laughs> so you go wider with your hands, it just changes. Typically a wider hand have a bigger, like bigger, 
wider grip on the <laughs> bar. So now that we know that we can hold the bar overhead and we know that we can do a quarter squat and we know how to even get the bar overhead by doing this upright row, turnover and punch action, we can start to learn how to actually set up the first transition and then second pull of the snatch. Snatch is broken up into those three parts. The third pull you could technically say is actually pulling the bar overhead, which we've already covered. The first pull is gonna be from the ground to just above the knee. It's typically where I like to see the transition start for the power snatch. Isaiah is gonna go ahead, line up. The bar is gonna be over the laces here or the ball of the foot. The only difference between the snatch and the clean is that you're gonna have to have your hips a little bit lower in that initial set position. After he sets himself up with the feet in the right position, he's gonna bend his knees until his shins actually touch the bar. He needs to make sure that his shoulders are in advance of the bar, which if you draw a straight line down from the bar, you can see that his shoulders are in advance. The only difference between this and a power clean is that he's actually gonna probably hinge slightly more so that he's able to be in the correct starting position. From this position, he should have a straight line. Oh, he needs to rest. This bit can't even hold a 45 second isometric. Oh Maybe we should have done this on a Wednesday. Take two, Jordan. Now that he's in his set position, I like to see this nice, arched position here with the back flat. His pelvis is in a neutral position. And this is a really key position. I can actually feel Isaiah shaking in this position. If you screw up this position, you'll screw up everything else. Isaiah is gonna go back down into that set position and all he's gonna do in the first pull is gonna set up and just push the knees back as his back angle stays exactly the same relative to the floor. So you can almost think of this like a leg press. Imagine there was a, a yep, good, back down. So you're kind of lifting the shoulders a little bit prematurely, Isaiah. Good, yep, back down. The other thing you'll notice is Isaiah is actively pulling the bar into himself. So you will have to use your lats to do that as well. Cool, nice, all right, back down. So that is the first pull of the power snatch. The power snatch and the power clean both have a first pull and I like to do it from the floor to above the knee. Now that he's above the knee, I'm gonna teach him the transition. From above the knee to the hip, there is a slight difference between the power clean and the snatch. In a clean, you can typically just tell athletes to jump. In a power snatch, you have to cue them to actually transition into what becomes the jump part of the power snatch where all the power is generated. And this is the transition. So Isaiah is basically gonna be in this hinged over, I like to call it silverback gorilla position. He's actually gonna transition so that the, the knees come forward and he comes upright. From this position, he's gonna jump aggressively. From the side, this saddled position is a nice balanced position with the knee relatively far forward, the hip is bent and in this semi-squat position, so it's a very strong position. You can imagine if I said, hey, hold on to something and stand up as hard as you can, you'd be able to generate a lot of force. Same thing is true for the power position of the power snatch. Isaiah's gonna go ahead, pause above the knee, and just do the transition and set it back down. So pause for a second. Yep, back down. So one thing that I want you to do, Isaiah, you're, as you're transitioning, you're sinking the hips too low, so the bar should be coming up as you transition, okay? So don't let your hip sink oh, down and bend your knee too much. So he should end the transition at about the hip crease. Nice, good, perfect. And that's a big mistake I see people make, but Isaiah, he's doing it way better now. So basically the shins come to vertical here. As he transitions, shins are vertical. He sees a slight knee bend and he's in this saddle position, bars at the hip crease. Shoulders are just in advance of the bar. That is the first and second or transition. And then the last part is actually the second pull, which is the jump. So we'll do two pauses. So first pull, good, transition. Pause for a second, jump. So this is the next step, back down to the ground. After Isaiah learns how to pause in the end of the first pull and then at the start of the second pull, we're gonna take the pauses out and this should go slow to fast. So Isaiah is just basically gonna jump with the bar, but making sure he hits those key positions. Now it's super important that he goes very slow and he makes sure that he hits those key shapes. So he hits the key shape, transition, then jump, good. All right, go ahead, do it again. Try to get a bigger jump on the bar. Nice and slow, transition, jump. Good, you can start that acceleration a little earlier. Start to jump when the bar's at mid-thigh. All right, even earlier now. There it is, good. So this is the first pull, transition, and then jump, breaking it up a little bit there. So it should be, the rhythm should be like this. Slow, fast, jump. Does that make sense? You right. tired? Yeah. Oh, is that why? <laughs> but now that we've learned how to do the first transition, second pull, and what is, the jump is the second pull, we're actually going to learn how to take that bar and pull it overhead. So now this is tying everything together. For this step, I definitely would take the weights off the bar um, and we're just gonna practice reps of power snatch from what is a hang at about mid shin. So now we're just taking all of these steps, we're putting them together and we're practicing just barbell reps of the power snatch. This is probably the single best drill that you can do for the power snatch. 
It's just practicing barbell snatches. So practicing the bar movement, practicing the rhythm, getting a feel for the acceleration of the bar and getting it weightless. We're all, we're gonna work on those kind of imperceptible elements here with the barbell power snatch. Empty barbell, Isaiah's gonna start by getting into a decent set position. When you get in this set position, it's important to start where the bar would be if there were plates on the bar. If you have boxes or something, that's good too. So Isaiah's in a good position, bar's about mid shin, back's flat. So from this position, go slow Isaiah, accelerate. Good, yep, so he's a little slow with the elbows. I like to see the hands punch up and the feet hit at the same time. So as your feet hit, punch your hands. Nice, okay, so he's kind of looping it out in front. So I want you to slow down a little bit, kind of muscle it uh, with the arms. Good, not bad. Still out in front, brush your chest, brush your nose. Same thing, hit your nose, hit yourself in the nose. There you go, that's way better. You can even get it closer. You're probably four, four inches away. There you go. Really solid reps in here. Punching up really hard, getting a really aggressive jump. Notice the acceleration on the bar, the rhythm. Oh, that, so was, that was way out terrible. Front. Yeah, you can feel it now. <laughs> you ready to get some reps now? Yeah. You ready? Gonna cue me? <laughs> and that is me. how you do a power snatch. <laughs> All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm out of breath, sweating. And that was just the bar. So imagine doing this heavy with high intent. It literally has the potential to transform your vertical. If this was useful, please like the video. It helps the channel tremendously. And like always, go to thpstrength.com if you want to get coached by both of us. Fill up your vertical gains, guys. All right, catch you guys in the next video.